So I'm Brad Fleener. Um, it's, I'm part of the Brina Cod, and it's a pleasure to be here in this, to come to the Cajal and meet with all of you. It's a blessing for me, my family. Um, and before I get started, um, a few things I want to say, particularly about the prayers we were just talking about. Um, be bold. Um, everything I read in Scripture says, don't question, just ask. Read the book of John. Matthew 7, 7, uh, he says, ask and you'll be given, right? Trust that. All right. So what I'm going to talk about today, or I kind of outline it in four different ways. We have four key points here. One is the goal. What is our goal? What is the goal? What is our, what's the expectation of us? Um, two, how do we do it? Three, what do we need to avoid? And four, what does it look like? So initially, I want to hit on some key points here. And it's going to be like I'm just picking, but we're, I'm doing this to show you the consistency through Scripture. And really, I'm not sure if I really need to talk about this today because we already talked about it the whole time today. And so I was doubting, like, all right, Father, is this what you want me to talk about today? I think he solidified that for me. And, uh, and also when I prepare for these, I view that he's first talking to me, and then hopefully there's something for you in it. And I'm sure there is. And so a lot of times it's, I'll be kind of direct. Don't take it personal. Maybe that's the Spirit talking to you. So what is the goal? What's the expectation? Let's we'll start with Abraham. Uh, Genesis 17.1 And it came to be when Abram was 99 years old that Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be perfect. And I give my covenant between me and you and shall greatly increase you. He said, be perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he said, be perfect. But the question is, how can we be perfect? Is anybody perfect? That's not an isolated verse. Let's go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 22. 22 through 24. This is David. This is after he's been delivered from Saul, after he's defeated giants, after he's done all these things, after he's murdered people, after he's committed adultery. Keep that in mind. For I have guarded the ways of Yahweh, and I have not acted wrongly against my Elohim. For all his right rulings are before me. As for his laws, I do not turn from them. I am perfect before him, I guard myself from my crookedness. David called himself perfect. Did you catch that? But did you catch what I said before that? So how do those two go together? How do those go to together? We're not done. There's more here about this. We're going to come back to this. Hold on. First Kings. First Kings eight. Fifty seven through sixty one. So this is after this is Solomon. The temple's been built. He's gathered the people. They're praying and there he's giving thanks, getting ready to slaughter, giving some prayers, giving some thanks. Fifty seven, eight fifty seven. Yahweh our Elohim is with us as he was with our fathers. He does not leave us nor forsake us to incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all of his ways and to guard his commands and his laws and his right rulings, which he commanded our fathers. 
And he let these words of, and let these words of mine, with which I have made supplication before Yahweh, be near Yahweh or Elohim day and night to maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people, Israel, the matter of each day in its day, so that the people of the earth might know that Yahweh is Elohim, there is no one else. Let your heart therefore be perfect to Yahweh or Elohim to walk in his laws and guard his commands as at this day. So he's saying be perfect. And, I, and the other two, actually, the verses were actually in the context of the commands and the law, the Torah. So we also have to recognize that. So Solomon said, be perfect. Walk in his commands. Solomon didn't do it. We, we know that. Solomon fell short. We all fall short. David fell short. Abraham wasn't perfect. But, all right, what did the Messiah say? Or is this just an Old Testament type thing? Uh, there's just no such thing as an Old Testament type thing. So uh, Matthew 5, 48. Matthew 5, verse 48. Therefore, we'll come back to that therefore in a second, because that means you have to understand what's before that. Be perfect as your Father in the heavens is perfect. What did Yeshua just say? <laughs> he said, be perfect, just like the Father is perfect. Whoa. How do we do that? How do we do that? So let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go to Matthew 5. Let's put this a little bit in context here. <clears throat> so that's not the only places. I want to, before we get into that, there's a couple other things. Uh, Psalm 119.1 said, blessed are the perfect in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahweh. And then 1 John 2, 5, whoever guards, guards his word, the Torah, truly the love of Elohim has been perfected in him. So again, we keep coming back to perfection, Torah. But what does that really mean? Well, Yeshua had to explain it to us because we think we know what it means. But he has to explain it to us because we don't really understand, neither today. And so we really have to understand what this means. So if we go to chapter 5, the first part of it is the, we, it's the Sermon on the Mount, right? That's what we kind of recognize it as. Blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are the compassionate. And then those are the people that are like a light on a hill. But then we get to Matthew 5, 17. And this is where I'm going to start reading. And this is the, the verses that... Uh, can be problematic for some. Do not think that I've come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. So now you can see he's kind of putting this in context. I'm talking about the Torah. I'm not destroying it. I came to complete it. I'm showing you how it's supposed to be done. For truly I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away, one yod and one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reign of the heavens. So he says, all right, these scribes, these Pharisees that you see, your righteousness needs to be above theirs. What were they doing? They are following the law or trying to follow the law, but they kind of added some things, maybe tweaked some things, and weren't really understanding what the law was. So let's pause here for just a moment. <clears throat> so I said David was perfect. He murdered and was adulterer. Do we have any murderers or adulterers in this room? No hands. I don't want to see it. But do we have? And you're like, well, no. <coughs> But we're going to change that in just a second. Everybody's hand's going to go up, or should go up. So let's keep reading. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that whoever is wroth with his brother without a cause shall be liable to judgment. So are you angry with someone, a brother in the kahal, in your fellowship without cause. That's equivalent to murder. 
And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be liable to the Sanhedrin. So that's a term of disrespect. Raka is a term of disrespect. Again, now you're standing before the Sanhedrin to be judged. But whoever says, you fool, shall be liable to the fire of Gehenna. So now we just upped it a little bit more. So you fool, dull, stupid, absurd. So let's put this in context. Has anybody, has anybody ever uttered such things? You're now a murderer. We need to be aware of this. You're now liable for the fire of Gehenna. Yeshua has to explain this to us. It's just not physical murder. You murder someone by your words. By what comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. What's in your heart this day? Is it clean? Is it pure? Okay. Let's move on to adultery. That was fun. Let's move on to adultery. All right. We don't have any adulterers in the room. You heard that it was said of those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, sorry, I'm in verse 27, 28 now. But I say to you that everyone looking at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You could even switch that to man. It's not just focusing on men, it's men and women. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it away from you. For it's better for you that one of your members perish than for your entire body to be thrown into Gehenna. So we see it's not just the physical adultery, it's the lusting, the desire, the some, asking for something that's not yours. And what is the, the punishment for that? The fire of Gehenna. Anybody perfect in the room? And if your right, uh, yep. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, this is verse thirty. Cut it off and throw it away from you, for it is better for you that one of your members perish than for your entire body be thrown into Gehenna. All right. So now we see Yeshua. This is why I always say Yeshua has raised the bar on us, right? He just explains things. He's at, it's not the letter of the law, it's the spirit of the law. What's the intent of the law? What is he what are we what are we getting at here? What does the Father want from us? He just explained in these two scenarios, murder and adultery, what he expects from us. Our words matter, our thoughts matter, what we see, what we do with our hands, they matter. They lead to sin, they lead to displeasure in the Father's eyes. It's evil. We're sinners, but then he says, be perfect. We were, and David called himself perfect. So how do we get to this place? Well, we pursue it. And we're going to talk more about the how now. We have to set it up, what the goal is, the perfection. And we won't see it on this side until he, the Messiah completes it but we should be striving for it. That's the goal. That's the expectation of the Father. We've read it numerous times now, four times, if my count's right, four times. All right, let's talk about the how. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. So we're, I want to read uh, Hebrews 5, uh, 12 through 6, 1, maybe a little bit more. So Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. So this is the how part. For indeed, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first elements of the words of Elohim. And you have become such as need, as need, milk and not solid food. For everyone partaking of milk is inexperienced in the word of righteousness, the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
But solid food is for the mature whose senses have been trained by practice to discern both good and evil. Therefore, having left the word of the beginning of the Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of belief toward Elohim, of the teaching of immersions and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of the everlasting judgment. And this we shall do if Elohim indeed permits. So let's talk about some key aspects here. <clears throat> so how do you become mature? How do you grow into perfection? It comes to a maturation process. You have to be mature. How do you do that? You have to be trained. You have to practice to discern both good and evil. That's a process. You're going to miss it sometimes. I miss it. You're going to miss it. But the key is, and this is where David comes into play, he noticed it and he turned from it and didn't do it again. That's the perfect. You repented. You turned, didn't do it again. You learned your lesson. So we have to be trained in the practice to discern good and evil. So we can go on to perfection. So put these small things aside. Let's move on to the bigger things and let's be perfect. If Elohim permits, catch that? Maybe the prayer is, Father, permit this, allow this. We want this, give it to us. We can't do it. We need you in this, if you permit, we don't deserve it. Please allow it. We don't deserve it, but please allow it. I don't deserve it, but I'm going to keep pursuing it. Paul says, strive. Paul says, run the race. Paul says, I've done the things I don't want. I do the things I don't want to do. Okay, he does it too. But he keeps saying, get up, pursue it, strive it, try for it, run the race. You will not get crowned unless you run the race. The race is pursuing righteousness through the Torah, through the Father's ways, through the intent of the Father's commands, not the letter of the commands. And we just read what some of the intents were with murder and adultery. All right, some of my more, let's move on to Ephesians. These have been kind of my favorites lately. Uh, again, it doesn't get any lighter, but we're going to move, the, we're still in the how. We're in the how do we do this? How? So we have to become mature by discerning what's good and evil. That's a process. That is a process. Growth is a process. Growth hurts. Now, I can tell you, sometimes the Father will put the clamp on you. How are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? Is, it, is what's going to come out of you? Is it going to be ugly? Or is it going to be good? We'll get to that here shortly. All right, Ephesians 4, start with chapter, uh, verse 1. I call upon you, therefore, I, the prisoner of the master, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all humility and meekness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being eager to guard the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you also were called with, in one expectation of your calling. One master, one belief, one immersion, one Elohim, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Let's go back to verse 1. Walk worthily of the call. Can you say that? With humility, meekness, patience. I joke, I've joked for years, don't ask for patience, but we need patience. I need patience. Ask for it. You'll get it. 
I've always said, watch what you ask for, because he'll give it to you, and he will give it to you. Like I said at the beginning about the prayers, be bold, humbly bold. He'll give it to you. You just have to wait. Bearing with one another in love. So there's a coin word that I think we need to, the love word. We need to break this down through a scriptural understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because there's a lot of secular views, secular ideas on what love is. Let's just cut to the chase and define it as Paul defined it. So there's no question about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient, is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast, is not puffed up, does not behave indecently, does not seek its own, is not provoked, reckon not the evil, does not rejoice over the unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Torah. We know Torah is truth. It covers all, believes all, expects all, endures all. Love never fails. If we walk in those and we walk in love, it will not fail. Do you have those qualities? Are you growing in those qualities? So that's, so now we can go back to Ephesians and when we see love, bearing with one another in love, now we understand how we need to do it. Humility, meekness, patience. Long suffering. Long suffering. Now's a good time to talk about something. So we're trying to get back to the right ways, right? And we've come, we're all from different backgrounds. I grew up Baptist. If you would have told me 30 years ago I'd be in this, I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, they, we, I know there's like Seventh-day Adventists, there's probably Catholicism, there's probably all kinds of things that I don't know. Maybe some of you were fortunate to grow up in the kind of the Hebrew Torah. Man, I'm happy for you. I wish I was, but I'm not. We have baggage. Baggage, right? We're going to have to check it at the door. We're going to have to work through some things in love, patience, kindness, gentleness, long suffering. And we're going to have to be humble and meek and say, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you are right. Or maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you're right. Can you do that? It's not just a yes, no. It's can you do that? It's an action. I can say yes or no in my head, or even maybe. But if I do something or don't do something, that will, that will show where I'm at. All right, uh, let's keep going because we're not done with Ephesians. Ephesians is great. Great book. So I'm going to start, pick up again. And so we, okay. One mat, so one body, one spirit. So we're one body, one spirit. We are together in this. One body. We work together. We need to learn to work together. And he's given us gifts. He's above all, through all, and in you all. He's in us all. He's in us all. Our bodies are now the temples, right? The spirit dwells with us, so we're a temple. And we're united through the spirit. Let's act like it. Let's act united. Each one of us, favor was given according to the measure of the gift of Messiah. We all have gifts. Do you know your gifts? If you don't, I would say uh, start praying about it. I need your gifts. Maybe the person next to you needs your gifts. Maybe the person across... The Tennessee needs your gifts. What are your gifts? Are you using your gifts? Maybe you know. Are you using them? They may be physical gifts. They may be spiritual gifts. We need them all. The body is hurting. Thank you, Eric. The body is hurting. We shouldn't be. I'm... Messiah says, 
come next to me, get under my yoke, it's easy. When you walk in his ways, he's going to take the load. Do you trust him in that? You're going to have to, you're going to be out in the field, in the sun, you're going to be working, but are you trusting? Are you, is he, he's going to be there for you. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up with verse eight. That is why it says when he went up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. But what does he went up mean? Except that he also went first went down into the lower parts of the earth. He who went down is also the one who went up far above all the heavens to fill all. And he himself gave some as emissaries and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as shepherds and teachers for the perfecting. So he's given people with gifts. Let's review those. Emissaries, so sent ones, apostles, prophets. There are prophets. It's not an Old Testament thing. It's not the Acts thing. There are prophets. There are evangelists, those who are going out, sharing the truth of Messiah and the Torah. There are shepherds, those who are close, dealing with the body. And then there are teachers speaking the truth. Messiah and Torah and the true intentions of Torah. Not just Torah. I hope you see the nuance there. And it's not a nuance. It's huge. For the perfecting of the set-apart ones, that's us. Holy ones, set-apart ones, for perfecting. To the work of the service, uh, to building up of the body of Messiah. We're a body. We have to view ourselves as a body. Are we there for one another? My finger hurts. You're going you're gonna to attend to it, right? You don't function as well. Something on the body hurts or is injured. It won't function as well. Are we attending to each other's needs? Not wants, needs. Until we all come to the unity of belief and of the knowledge of the Son of Elohim to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the completeness of Messiah, so that we should no longer be children tossed and borne about by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of men and cleverness unto the craftiness of leading astray, but maintaining the truth in love, we grow up in all respects into him who is the head Messiah. So these people, what I, those five I just kind of mentioned, are here to perfect. And they're also to keep us from every kind of new teaching. That's not true. We all have our ideas. So we all have our ideas about things, but are they correct? Okay, bring your idea. Let's talk about them. Let's discern through them. Oh, that's maturity. We talked about that. What's good, what's evil? That's maturity. We're maturing through that so we can become perfect. And that's what we're talking about. You see how all this is coming together? So we need to not be led astray by every teaching of man. If you've been in this long enough, so Christianity is one thing. That's where I came out of. Now you come into the Torah, Hebrew roots, whatever you want to call it. There's all kinds of different doctrines. Where are we seeking the truth? What is the truth? I don't think we're going to know the full truth until Messiah actually shows up and teaches it, but we need to strive for it. We need to strive for it with meekness, humility, patience with one another. We all have our ideas, but we all need to come together and agree. Sometimes that's agree to disagree on some things, but we need to come Together, we're a body. We need to be united. That's the how. All right, two more. These will go a little quicker, I think. Let's. What do we need to avoid? Uh, Titus, Titus chapter three. Uh, let's see if I can find it. <clears throat> I think it's right before Hebrews. Well, you we have Philemon, then you have Titus. So. Titus is two books before Hebrews. So Titus 3, chapter 3, 
verses three through nine. <clears throat> verses three through nine. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in evil and envy, being hated and hating one another. Oh, wait, he just described us. Hope we caught that. He's talking about us. We ourselves were once, we ourselves were once part of some of, some of these, if not all of these. But when the kindness and the love of Elohim, our Savior toward man, appeared, he saved us not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his compassion through the washing and of rebirth, the renewal by the set-apart spirit, which he poured out on us richly through Yeshua, Messiah, our Savior, that having been declared right in his favor, we should become heirs according to the expectation of everlasting life. Trustworthy is the word, and in this regard, I wish you to strongly affirm that those who have bleed in Elohim should keep their minds on maintaining good works, this is good and profitable to men, but keep away from foolish questions and genealogies and strife and quarrels about the Torah, for they are unprofitable and useless. So we need to be careful. We need to not get into, it says foolish questions, genealogies, oh, I'm from the tribe of XYZ. Strife and quarrels about the Torah. Paul says they're unprofitable and useless. What's the what are we after the intent or are we after the being correct? Oh, I'm right. Sorry, you lose. What's the intent? Because they're unprofitable and useless. Now I'm not saying we throw the Torah out. That's not what that's saying. What's the intent? tent of Torah. Let's not bicker about it. Let's discuss it and come down to what's true and right and what is the Father's intent and these commands. All right, Galatians. Galatians. Again, the void part. What do we need to avoid? The void. And then we can get into what it looks like. Galatians 5, verses 13 through 21. Galatians 5, 13 through 21. For you brothers have been called to freedom. Only do not use the freedom as an occasion for the flesh, but through love serving one another. For the entire tour is completed in one, in one word, in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I want to stop there just for a second. We know Yeshua didn't throw the Torah out. But have you ever noticed what he spends a lot of time talking about? A lot of time talking about? How you treat others. A lot of his conversations are out. Not how the up and down, but between. That's where things really go wrong. And our relationships will influence the up and down. And if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. So if you're going to bite each other, you're going to be consumed. There's no unity. You're not going to be, you're going to be worthless. Nothing's going to happen. What you're striving for is now just not going to happen. Because you're not together. You're going to be consumed. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are, are opposed to each other, so that you do not do what you desire to do. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under Torah, and the works of the flesh are well known, which are these. Adultery, whoring, uncleanness, indecency, idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambitions. That's a new one. Are you ambitious? Dissensions? We've talked about that. Factions? Do we have any factions? Do we have envy? Oh, I wish I had that. I wish I had that brothers or sisters gifting. What's your gifting? I need your gifting. Murderers, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like, of which I forewarn you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the reign of Elohim. 
Sounds familiar. Kind of what Yeshua was getting at. You're not going to get the, the, the kingdom. Because these are all against Torah, are they not? You're breaking Torah, the intention of Torah here. They're the flesh. That's the legal, legal side of things, and we're trying to do it, but it creates dissensions. We're fighting. We have envy. We have this. We have that. There's no unity. Now let's switch. What does it look like? How do, what is it supposed to look like? And Paul just transitions right into it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. We broke that down. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Torah. Wow, there's no law against those. You know why? Because it's Torah. When you walk it out right, you're going to have all these. When you're walking it out in attention, seeking it, striving after it, you're going to have the love. You're going to have the joy. You're going to have the, what was it, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Is it going to be perfect? No. But when we mess up, we're going to recognize it, change, move forward. I'm going to forgive you. You're going to forgive me. I'll be patient with you. Sometimes straightforward words will need to occur, maybe to me, maybe to you, but it's for our own good. And we do it in a manner that's appropriate, it's good. And those who are the Messiah have impelled the flesh with its passions and the desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So let's not provoke or envy one another. What are your gifts? What is your calling? What does he have for you? What do you need to put aside in order to grow? So it's less of you, more of him. What was that, John the Baptist, I believe? Amen. Shouldn't we have that attitude? That thought? That intention? All right, last verse here, Colossians Colossians 3. <clears throat> see if I can find it. Uh, Colossians 3. All right, I want to start in verse 5. At verse 5 and kind of go down there. Colossians 3, verse 5, and following, therefore put to death that your members which are of the earth on earth, whoring, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, greed of gains, which is idolatry. We know what idolatry means in the Torah. It's, you read the Torah, the Tanakh, you understand idolatry is not good. Because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience. The sons of disobedience. So you're not obeying. That's our call to obey. That's the expectation, the goal. If you're not doing that, if you're not seeking the expectation of the goal, you're now disobedient. In which you also once walked when you lived in them, but now also put off all these displeasure, wrath, evil, blasphemy, filthy talk from your mouth. Do not lie to each other since you have put off the old man with his practices and have put on the new one who is renewed in knowledge according to the likeness of him who created him. Where there is not Greek and Yehudi, Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigner, Scythian, slave, free, but Messiah is in all, is all and in all. Therefore, as chosen ones of Elohim, set apart and beloved, put on compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. If anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, you also should, uh, so also should you. Paul's intense here. I mean, we keep seeing this. But what is Paul getting at? He's, he's starting to poke. I'm starting to get uncomfortable. 
I'm uncomfortable. He's asked me to do things I don't want to do. The expectation's high. But above all these, put on love, which is the bond of the perfection. Did you catch that? We didn't leave the perfection idea. We have not left the perfection idea. It's right there. Verse 14, but above all these, put on love, which is a bond of the perfection. So that's all the scripture I have. Um, so again, we have the goal, we have the expectation. Strive after perfection. Strive after perfection. We have the how. We have to discern what's good and evil. We have to seek the gifts. We have to seek those that are called to help us. We have groups of people that are there to help us out so we're not tossed to and fro with false teaching. There's a lot out there. Truth is hard to find. Let's be honest. Truth is hard to find this day and age. Probably has been for a long time. But I think it's even worse because we have internet. We have social media. Everybody's right. Oh, everybody's right in their own eyes. That creates chaos. We need to come together, united. All right, we're going to seek this out. We're going to humbly seek this out with patience, long-suffering. We need to avoid dissensions. We just need to avoid it. I mean, we're all guilty of it. We have our own ideas. We come from a multitude of different backgrounds. I mean, they came out of Egypt. There's multitude of people, multitude of ideas. That's how some of these things got introduced. We're no different. We're no different. We have our own idols coming from different backgrounds. It's just spin a little differently. But that's the same thing. And what's it look like? It's the fruit of the Spirit. We should be growing in the fruit. For me personally, that's how I judge myself or try to judge myself. And we should judge ourselves. Do I see fruit in my life? Do I actually see these things? I, I'm talking about, do I see patience in my life? Do I have joy? Do I have peace? Do I have those? If I say no, what's wrong? Well, go back to the top of the list. <laughs> Move back up the list, and you're going to find what's wrong. And then work on that. Come back down. I have joy now. Thank you, Father. I'm seeking you to help me to walk in peace and joy. And the body. If we're right individually, we will come together right as a whole. It starts with us. It starts with you. It starts with me. But are we humble enough to come together, seek the truth, and walk it out, and be who Messiah wants us to be, who the Father wants us to be? So I'll leave it with that question. How are we doing it? We're going to do it imperfectly. That's okay. Just turn from the imperfect to become the perfect. Strive for the perfect. We won't be perfect until Messiah comes back and does it. Do what we can't do, but we should be striving for it. Day in, day out. It's harder to do what's right then what's wrong? Because you're going against yourself to do what's right. Your flesh, not the spirit, wants you to do one thing. The spirit wants you to do another thing. What are you conceding to? What your flesh wants or what the spirit of the Father in you wants? I'm going to end in a prayer. Abba Father, thank you for these words. I don't deserve these words. We don't deserve these words. I thank you for your truth. May these words sink deep into our hearts, deep into our minds, so we change.
to become like your son, Yeshua, walking out the Torah, the commands as you desire, with the intention you desire, in brotherly love. It's called the book of Acts, Father. Help us, help us get there. We can only get there if you allow it. We're asking that you allow it. Allow it amongst this kahal, amongst this assembly, amongst these small fellowships and beyond. We ask you of that. We can only do that if you allow it. And we ask you, we humbly come before you, but we boldly ask of it from you. You say, ask and it will be given. We're asking now. And may you give. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Shua. Amen. Thank you.